Good morning, Jerry. Good morning to our listeners. It's uh, great to be here. Great to be with you, the legendary Martin. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Jerry. No, I'm going to introduce you so that we all know exactly who we're talking to. Um, this morning, we are delighted to be uh, welcoming and talking to uh, Jerry Inzerillo. Uh, Jerry is the Chief Executive Officer of Diria Gate Development Authority, which is really the context of today's uh, conversation. Uh, and Jerry is also Vice Chairman of Forbes Travel Guide. So welcome, Jerry. Many thanks, my friend. Good to be with you. Good, good. Jerry, let's start off with a big question. Um, it could be said that a huge uh, world tourism spotlight uh, is turning towards Saudi at the moment with Vision 2030. Um, and within this is this uh, mega project of Diria Gate. Um, obviously, my question is, can you tell us about Diria Gate and obviously its context within the uh, Vision 2030? Yes, thank you very much. And uh, um, warmest greetings during these surreal times of COVID uh, to all, all, all the listeners. Um, when His Majesty the King became king, um, prior to that, he had been governor of Riyadh. And His Majesty is also a foremost historian. So he is meticulous in his detailing and his commitment to the House of Al Saud and the birthplace of the kingdom and the birthplace of the entire Arabian Peninsula, which is Dedea. Now, Dedea sits within the Riyadh Metroplex, a city of 7.2 million people that is dynamically growing uh, between uh, two to 300,000 people a year. Uh, that's very important. Um, with Vision 2030, it's the, His Majesty and the Crown Prince's vision to diversify the kingdom uh, from just oil revenue or uh, energy revenue. But the Vision 2030 is bigger it wants a healthy, vibrant society. It wants to open up the kingdom so people could see it and not perpetuate um, uh, perceptions that may have been um, wrong. So one of the things that was very important as it to open up tourism and to take tourism from 3% to 10% of global GDP, of Saudi GDP, and to, instead of welcoming uh, 16 million tourists that we had last year, mostly religious pilgrimages to 100 million tourists, um, the, His Majesty the King and the Crown Prince feel that people will definitely want to come to Saudi Arabia. And I couldn't agree more. And that's why after 50 plus years in the business, uh, I was very honored uh, to come on as CEO of the Dedea Gate Development Authority. Mm -hmm. So tourism is a major pillar in, in Vision 2030, um, a healthy, vibrant society, a tolerance and understanding and returning the kingdom to its moderate um, sociological values and principles that it had prior to uh, uh, 1979 is in full force with all the reforms. Now, Derea, the birthplace of the kingdom, is very special because Derea sits in one of the most famous oases in the world, which is called the Wadi Hanifa. And that Wadi is historically... Uh, we have proof of life over a thousand years there. And we just did an archeological dig this week and found all kinds of uh, ceramics and uh, fossils and different things uh, that are very, uh, very old that the archeological team are verifying now. But in the first Saudi state, and when one looks back to the 1700s, because there was water and shade and food, um, people stopped at the Wadi Hanifa um, to trade, to share stories, to rest, relax. And that created, everybody said, well, we, we want to live here. So then as that period of time, over 30,000 people lived in today in these very elaborate mud constructed uh, buildings um, before today was destroyed, rebuilt, destroyed, rebuilt. But it was the capital of the Saudi kingdom. It's the birthplace of the Saudi kingdom. And then in during uh, several historic periods where the kingdom went through ups and downs, um, some of the members left and that would become uh, Kuwait and Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, the 
uh, the, G, the uh, Arabian Gulf as we know it. So that's why Derea is very, very important because it's the birthplace of the Saudi kingdom. And it's a very, very important week because on Saturday and Sunday, it's the first time in the history of the Middle East that the kingdom is playing host to the G20. So Fantastic, His Majesty and the Crown Prince. And Derea was to be the site of the um, cultural night. Obviously now we'll still uh, welcome the press and media and, you know, with, with strict COVID uh, detailing and protocol. But um, uh, the cultural night was to be at the birthplace, which was, which is today. So this is a, a very big week for us. Yes, yes. Well, that's a fantastic, uh, fantastic. I mean, it really is a, a, a project that's very hard to get your head around the, the sheer magnitude of it when you actually look at the, at the sheer size of it. Can you give us a few um, uh, sizes and times and, uh, and the content uh, of the project? Yes, um, this is, as you say, this is a very dynamic project. Now, if you were to look metaphorically at a big, a, a beautiful necklace, and in the centerpiece was a beautiful jewel. The jewel of the necklace would be the UNESCO World Heritage Site of at today nice in nice. Derea. This is the birthplace, and you know the kingdom, yeah. and you know you know uh, you've been to Alul and one of the other beautiful uh, UNESCO World Heritage Sites. We have five. We anticipate having several more um, in the upcoming years. We have several applications pending for UNESCO heritage. But now what happened is that with the people coming, with tourism coming, we're creating now the largest authentic cultural heritage site in the world. So there are three master plans that the Derea Gate Development Authority, or as we affectionately call it DGDA, um, are doing. Happy. Uh, now, one of them is um, the restoration of this historic oasis, which is called the Wadi Hanifa. And what we're doing is we're taking all the development that has that encroached into the Wadi over the last 50 years, taking it out and reinstalling all the beautiful Derea palm trees, which make these beautiful golden dates. And we're gonna be planting over a million trees and shrubs and everything indigenous, only things that lived in Derea. And we're making a huge park, a three kilometer park with bridle paths and, and jogging trails and bike paths and family picnic areas that will be open not only to the Saudi public and uh, a, once again, an oasis in the metropolis of, Dere uh, of Riyadh but a place that everybody can see the Wadi to what it looked like 300 years ago when they come to visit. Then we're adding a seven kilometer uh, master plan because it's the crown prince's vision that he wants a holistic uh, development, meaning where can people stay, 30 hotels? Where can people dine and be festive, 100 restaurants? Where can people shop, souks and beautiful retail? Where can people study a new university with uh, uh, King Salman University named after our wonderful His Majesty with three new vibrant colleges of hotel and tourism and journalism and performing arts and then um, history and, and international uh, diplomacy. Um, so uh, school systems, work, shopping, living. So you have a whole microcosm, but what makes this place very special is that it's gonna be in the authentic Najda architecture, in the authentic mud and stone materials. And it is just beautiful what the Crown Prince has approved. And we're already in the ground and we will have our first assets delivered and operating by November of, of 2021. That's absolutely fantastic. And I mean, what's interesting is that uh, uh, a couple of uh, uh, sort of not peripheral detail, but interesting detail to me was the sheer size of the car park. And the reason I mention that is uh, that it's very pedestrianized, isn't it? It's very focused on, on, on walking and cycling and that sort of thing, uh, uh, so that you can actually experience and enjoy uh, all the aspects of it um, uh, without your car. 
Yes, and this is a this is something that's very uh, passionate to the Crown Prince in particular. You see, to uh, the custodian of the two holy masters, Majesty the King, authenticity and historical verification is very important. Um, to the Crown Prince, um, a healthy society, getting people out, walking and visiting and riding bicycles and, you know, just having a healthy, vibrant society. Uh, uh, so the Crown Prince wants areas, but we want people to walk and explore. You know, one of the great things about tourism, and nobody knows this better than you, Martin, is that if you go to beautiful places like Siena, Italy and Florence, and you go to places like Marrakesh, part of the, part of the beauty is kind of meandering through the streets and getting lost and finding yourself in souks and cafes and art galleries. And the Crown Prince loves that as a concept. And he loves people running into each other of all different religions and ethnicities and different languages. And he'll often talk about Hyde Park and um, you know Central Park where on a, on a sunny day you see all people just interacting. But today, uh, and, and where we are in the master plan is built on Palisade Bluffs. And these bluffs are about 50 meters over the, over the wadi. So they're cooler in the summertime and it's, it, they're beautiful to walk through. And it will look like walking through um, what Saudi Arabia looked like 300 years ago. Now, the, the, the science of that, that's the art of it. The science of it is that there's a whole metropolis underground. And we're excavating right now, eight and a half million cubic square meters of soil. We've already taken out two and a half million. Now this is almost 900,000 dump trucks of rock and, and sand that we have to put back because we have three huge metro stations and two uh, subway stations and all kinds of deliveries and everything underground, fully, fully air conditioned, fully beautified. And then you come up into the old city and walk it and then go down. But this, this will also include over 30,000 parking spots underground. So the excavation, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's, um, it's several times the size of what, uh, what was done to prepare for the uh, Hong Kong airport. So this is a giant engineering uh, project that, that we've started and we're about, we're about 25% uh, 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 along on that huge infrastructural project. I have to say that uh, uh, as people get increasingly uh, uh, aware and interested and committed to this project, uh, that they will find themselves slightly distracted, if it's in a sense, by the whole uh, construction aspect of it. Uh, uh, I mean, when I was reading it uh, and swatting up a little bit uh, uh, on the project, um, you find yourself getting really uh, uh, entranced by the sheer uh, ingenuity and the sheer magnitude uh, of the the construction element of it. I mean, in a sense, that's not really so much central center stage uh, for, for the tourism industry. For the tourism industry, well, we want to tell them what they're actually going to get. But you have to, it, it is absolutely jaw-dropping, the actual um, uh, construction side of it. Yes, it is. And, and you know, um, we, we pleasantly and affectionately, we call that here MBS time which is uh, our Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is very affectionately in this society known as MBS. MBS, yeah. Because he is a machine. Yeah. This guy works an 80 hour week, which means that all of us work an 81 hour week. Because we, gotta be, <laughs> we gotta be an hour ahead of the boss. Yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. now on these giga projects as they're called here, and there's many of them, dozens, he approves every rendering. He approves all the engineering and you would be stunned on the attention to detail uh, that we have when we meet with him. And he, he like, would, when it comes to the daunting side of the construction, we're so meticulous in the hoarding and uh, environmental sensitivity of particles in the air and weighing the trucks so they, they, they don't damage the roads and everything. I mean, he's meticulous on uh, cultural preservation and he's meticulous on environmental issues. So 
we don't, with all the construction going on, and I was on one particular part of the site on Friday, and we had over 400 pieces of equipment. And I'm talking earth movers and diggers and dump trucks, 400 pieces. But the public doesn't see it no. because it's all sound insulated and, and, uh, and hoarded off uh, where they're excited about what's going to come, but, but where they're not penalized or inconvenienced by this daunting amount of work. Um, yeah. I had the privilege of coming to Dubai in 1990 when I was a president of Kersner Entertainment. And we built Royal Mirage there, which is now 22 years old, and then Atlantis. So we've seen Dubai in its great vision um, in the last 30 years. But the Crown Prince wants to replicate that arc and more intent and he has the energy the resources the vision and he is driving us to do our best work and uh and we're very proud of that it's, it's truly impressive it really is and uh the, the work that he uh, has uh instigated and is carrying off uh, is it, really as i say uh, impressive um one thing i would just like to do um when i was um <clears throat> researching this project, um, I was struck by the integrity within the uh, actual tourism destination. And I know we've sort of talked quite a bit about it already this morning, but I wonder if I could just ask you, just so that there's some clarity on this, to actually bullet point the specifics uh, of the destination for um, for visitors when they are considering um, visiting over the years. Yes, well, um, as we started, <clears throat> Very high up, um, after oil and petroleum, and you know, there's very aggressive goals in 2030 uh, with Saudi's leadership in the future on solar power, wind power, different elements of sustainable energy. That's, that's for another talk. But right behind it is the kingdom's commitment to tourism. So we, uh, we, want, we will attract 100 million tourists by 2030. Uh, unbelievably extensive, breathtaking plans are being uh, implemented right now, implemented, not planned, for the two holy cities of Mecca and Medina. So we can move the pilgrimages from 16 million thereabouts to 30 million. This is great because the Islamic community around the world, 1.6 billion, um, all are welcomed here in the kingdom, which hosts the two holy mosques. So these, these cities are being prepared for exponential growth. Then you have other cities like Riyadh, the capital city, which is growing because all the Saudis are coming home. Quality of life here is very good. The crown prince's reforms are returning the society to moderation and it's a very positive society. So it's a, a Riyadh is a very happy city right now. Jeddah, the dynamic city on the Red Sea, very vibrant, getting a lot of focus from the Ministry of Tourism, our wonderful Minister of Tourism, His Excellency Ahmed Al Khatib. Um, and then there's a lot of areas, the other UNESCO heritage sites. I mean, people don't realize that there's snow in Saudi Arabia. So up north in Tabuk, and then people don't realize that you have a fabulous industry of roses and rose oil and in Saudi Arabia, in Taif. People don't realize that one of the largest producers of mangoes in the world is Saudi Arabia. I thought it was deserts. Yes. When you go down south to the empty quarter, you will see the most beautiful deserts in the world. But that's only one thing. If you go to Al Suda and you see lush valleys, green and cool. And I mean, there's real winter there. So now the kingdom is open uh, to tourism. And when we opened it up for 55 countries, including Macau and Hong Kong in September. We were averaging 55,000 uh, tourist visas a week prior to this March uh, COVID shutdown. And the, world, the WTTC and the United Nations World Travel Organization both certified Saudi Arabia as the leading growing, uh, most dynamic grow, uh, growth, a tourism new country in the world. So this is great. Um, leadership from Ministry of Tourism under His Excellency Al Khatib, great leadership under the wonderful Assignus Prince Badr as a Minister of Culture, 
and certainly all the credit has got to go to uh, His Majesty and the Crown Prince for giving us the resources to open up the country, to open up the yeah. kingdom. Yeah, thank you. Um, <clears throat> give us some idea of timelines on, on the uh, on the particular um, uh, uh, DGDA uh, project. Yeah, uh, D, you know it's massive, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So. One thing that the Crown Prince is extremely focused on is that in a lot of parts of the world, governments announce very grandiose, ambitious projects, and they will put up beautiful hoarding, and five, 10 years later, nothing's done. You've seen a lot of evidence of this. The Crown Prince is a doer, and he is a very driven, not only head of state, but CEO. So we already on DGDA and on DDA, we are opening up assets in 20, late 20, fourth quarter of 2021. In 2022, we will have over 18 hotels in the ground, um, several cultural institutions in the ground. Uh, we will house the kingdom's contemporary art museum, which will, which will break ground by that time the opera house, which will break ground by that time, uh, entertainment and performance arenas, which will break ground by that time. So we have a very substantial first phase that by 2024, we'll have at least 86 assets completed or near completed. And then there is a phase two of the project, which, we'll, which we're working on now, they'll, they'll run in parallel streams and that will uh, uh, roll into 25, uh, 2025, 2026. Um, I, as you can imagine, uh, we are moving very quickly. And by the end of 2021, we'll have most of the infrastructure in place uh, so people can move. And, you know, this is, th th this is a vast uh, 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 need for electric, um, very sustainable environmental ways of handling water, which is a, which is a very uh, precious commodity here in the kingdom, um, sewerage, uh, reclamation. So um, there will be a lot of assets between now and uh, 2024. And with the, with the first and second phases completed by 26, 27. Right. Okay, good. Um, so, I mean, in terms of, 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 of conveying the excitement of this whole project to the world, do, how do you, uh, what's your thoughts about timing of that and, and how, how you might go about marketing or just in a broader context, just getting the message out to the marketplace? Because there's a, there is a timing element to that, isn't there? And I'm just wondering if you have yes. any thoughts about that. Yes, well, um, you know, we had a very robust, the, the Crown Prince gave us, uh, gave the Ministry of Tourism quite a robust budget for 2020. And the, the Ministry of Tourism did a breathtaking campaign, several campaigns on the beauty of uh, Saudi Arabia and the warmth of its uh, wonderful people. Um, DGDA, we have, a, we have a very robust budget just on, um, you know, uh, the Salwa Palace, the silhouettes of Salwa Palace, where the picture of the G20 heads of state are, are taken. You know, this is the icon of the kingdom. So um, the way the Acropolis is immediately identifiable to the Greeks and the Colosseum immediately identifiable to the uh, Italians and the Romans and the pyramids to the Egyptians, so will be the iconic image of uh, Salwa Palace. Uh, everybody in, in, in a few, few short years, two, three years, everybody, when they come to the kingdom, and certainly when they come to Riyadh, no one will come here without want, wanting to have that bucket list taking that picture in front of those, uh, those palaces. Now, what happened is that that all got interrupted with COVID because why would you put out a global campaign when you can't fly anybody? That's right. <laughs> so what happened is that as recently as last night, and I have the honor and privilege of serving also on the board of the Saudi Tourism Authority, and the board last night, uh, under the leadership of His Excellency Al Khatib, uh, we approved a new uh, marketing campaign that's getting ready to break um, uh, for the you know uh, for the new year, 
That's wonderful. It's vibrant. Now, we were very, very lucky because Saudis have disposable income and Saudis love to travel. So what happened in the period of, of March to November is that the kingdom set record levels of, of internal tourism where Saudis rediscovered their own country. So instead of going to Europe and going to America, um, many, many Saudis for the first time went to places that only their grandparents or their parents visited. So we had a boom in local tourism and put up historic numbers that the kingdom had never seen. So we're fortunate that way. And also because of the great leadership of, uh, his, ex uh, of his majesty and the crown prince and our ministers, you know, it's still, yesterday we had 300 um, COVID cases in the kingdom. Well, it's 300 too many, as you know, but 300 compared to 150, 160,000 in other countries, um, you know, the kingdom has done a very, very good job on this. Now, we still have to wait for the vaccine and, and, and that will, the vaccine will contribute to getting travel going but it doesn't make sense to really put out a global campaign unless the skies are open to allow visitors to fly. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Jerry, we're almost at the end of our time and uh, I, I would like to uh, thank you very much. But just before you go, you have signed off on your first uh, hotel contract, I believe, but very briefly, please. Yeah, well, we, we, um, we have a, a, what we call a Samhan Nuzal Hotel which is a very exciting hotel built in the old um, Saudi way of uh, the mud and bricks. That's uh, 143 rooms. Uh, we have uh, one of the major hotel company. We'll, we're gonna be announcing that uh, in December. But more importantly, after the November 24th meeting, uh, board meeting, all of the major luxury hotels, today are is meant to be um, five-star. Uh, we, we have one, two, three, four, five-star segmentation throughout Riyadh. But today is not a theme park. It's very sacred. It's very special. And we will have a number of people that will come visit us, but it's not meant to run the numbers like Orlando. We have a fabulous giga project here in Riyadh called Gadia. That's meant to be pop culture and to entertain the society. It's got the largest six flags and all hundreds of amenities that are gonna be very exciting. That's meant for big, big, big numbers, millions and millions and millions. So today on its hotel contracts, all of the principal luxury five-star brands that everybody knows uh, are coming to Dedea and today will have 30 uh, hotels um, in its first uh, two phases. Okay. Jerry, it has been an absolute pleasure. I think for us, we feel privileged uh, to be interviewing you at this, uh, at this particular point where it's just on the cusp of this wonderful future. So thank you very much indeed for your time. Uh, it's you. an absolute pleasure.